So the 46 books of the Bible were written in many different places over thousands of years. And the question has to be, how did we come up with this particular collection? So we're gonna break it into two parts. We're gonna take a look at the Old Testament first, and then we're gonna go to the New Testament second. You would think that the Old Testament would be kind of a no-brainer. Just go back and look and see what Jesus used, right? I mean, what were the Jews at the time using? It's pretty simple, duh. But it's not simple because at the time, the Jews didn't have some sort of universal list of what scriptures belonged and which ones didn't. If you lived in a different region from region to region, you might have different books. That sounds crazy. But actually, it kind of makes sense because this is a time before books. You didn't have a big volume of scripture. You would have scrolls and you would open up your scroll and you would read from the, the scroll of Isaiah or you'd read from the scroll of Deuteronomy and that would be your scripture. And you know, different communities would have different batches of them. Now, everybody would have had the first five books that we'd call the Torah or the Pentateuch, if you're talking about the Greek version. Um, that would be ex uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Everybody had those, no question. You, you, Joshua accepted. But as you got uh, into more recent history, perhaps um, you, you had some discrepancies. Now, this is further compounded by the fact that um, the Jewish people kind of live at a crossroads. The, the Holy Land is kind of in the middle of things. And so when one army would go to attack another army, they would pretty much run through Israel. They, and they'd get pushed all over the place. The most recent of which had been Alexander the Great, who conquered the entire known world when he was a teenager. And that, quite frankly, is terrifying. But anyway, so he conquers the entire known world. That's why at the time, the universal language was Greek. <laughs> So you had Jewish communities that were spread all over the world because every time someone wanted to go someplace, they conquered the Jews. So you had Jews in Alexandria, which is actually in Egypt, but it was a Greek city. You had Jews in, in, in Rome. You had Jews in the Holy Land, obviously, but you had Jewish communities all over the place. Some of them didn't speak Hebrew or Aramaic. Some of them spoke Greek. And so you had Greek versions of the Old Testament being used, and those tended to include other books, what we might call the Deuterocanonicals or the Apocryphal books. It wasn't until about two centuries after Christ that the Jews got around to coming up with a complete list. And they did so kind of because they had an identity crisis. They, the temple had been destroyed. There was no temple. Rome took care of that. So we, what are the Jews without the temple? There was another issue, too, they kind of had to deal with, and that was Christians. I mean, because all of a sudden there's this sect of other people who are claiming to be descendants of Abraham um, and brought into the covenant through a new covenant, and they're following Jesus. They call themselves the way. And so what are we to them? And so what happened was the Jewish scholars at the time, around the end of the second century, um, decided that we need to canonize a list of scripture. And so what they did was, in somewhat reactionary fashion, they just rejected the Septuagint, the Greek version of scripture, and they adopted the Tanakh, the a smaller version of Hebrew scriptures. And you might be tempted to say, well, gosh, that makes more sense. That we the, the Greek must have been suspect. But really, if you look at the historical record, it's not that way. In fact, if you look back at two recent discoveries at Qumran or the Dead Sea Scrolls, what we'll find is that some of those disputed books, these deuterocanonicals or uh, these uh, apocryphal books, were actually being used by Jewish-speaking Hebrew Aramaic communities at the time of Christ or shortly thereafter in the first century. Uh, and they were being used in Aramaic and Hebrew. So they weren't necessarily Greek books. Okay, sorry, wrong hippo. Yeah, now that, that's the hippo we're looking for. See, it wasn't until about the turn of the third century that the Christian church got together and decided on a canon of scripture. And again, it wasn't a hard, fast canon, but it was at least a list of what belongs and what doesn't belong. And that was first done at the Council of Hippo here. Now, the list that was given at the Council or Synod of Hippo pretty much became the list of the Old Testament for the church. Uh, it was maybe slowly adopted in the Eastern Church, but very quickly adopted in the West, uh, and it was later confirmed at Councils of Carthage, and then ultimately at the Council of Trent, which was then um, kind of responding to the Protestant Reformation. The Protestants, led by Martin Luther, took a look at the Old Testament and said, well, gosh, why are we using these Greek scriptures as our foundation? Shouldn't we go back to the Hebrew? Wouldn't that be more historical? 
Unfortunately, it wasn't more historical because if you look at what Christians were using in the first, second, third centuries, what you're going to see is they were largely using the Septuagint. Why? Because they spoke Greek, because they weren't Jews. Anyway, that's kind of where we get the Old Testament. <laughs> 